Today we're breaking down how much it actually costs to live in Seoul in 2024. We're going to do so by looking at the month of June and how much I spent in those 30 days. When I am talking about the cost of things, I will be using US dollars and rounding up as well. It's just easier to talk about it that way. Let's get right into it with one of the bigger expenses of the month, which would be, of course, rent. My husband and I do live in a newer villa, so we are paying the equivalent of $680 a month. That means I am paying $340 a month for rent. I'm not even gonna talk about the major deposit we had to put down because it's not a monthly expense. It's already in the house. But if you're curious, you can go watch one of my older videos about renting apartments in Korea. I'll briefly mention bills. Of course, it's a monthly expense, but it does change every month. So in the winter, because our apartment does have the floor heating system, gas will be more of an expensive bill. In the summer, it's the opposite. Electricity will be more expensive. I'm going to combine water, gas, electric, and Wi-Fi together. And that came out to be about $29 for my half of the bill. Additionally, I am paying $77 a month for my phone bill and it's quite expensive because I'm still paying off my Z Flip 4 and it's a two-year contract so I think I have another six months on that price plan. Third set expense of the month would be our groceries. I actually have a secondary bank account that I don't use anymore for my personal use. So what we do is we just transfer the equivalent of $360 each into that account every month. This account is only used for things like ordering groceries on coupon or going to the mart, going out to eat together, buying Charlie's things such as food, medication, and the occasional vet visit. We usually shop on coupon, but sometimes we do have to hit the mart for some things that we forget. Korean products are relatively affordable and there's a lot of one plus one deals but fruit especially has just gotten more and more expensive. Watermelon is almost 15 bucks and a pack of avocado is like seven. We try to find more deals on coupon. I think that it's just easier, but sometimes we do have to run to the mart. Because we do use a separate account, it's really easy to keep track of how much we are spending throughout different points of the month so that we can adjust accordingly. We eat out, I would say two to three times a week, and Sunghoon does a really good job of meal prepping for us and cooking the dinners. It really helps us keep to that $720 goal in that account for one month of expenditure. My final set expense for the month would be transportation. We are well connected both to subway lines and to bus stations, so we have no need for a car here. I take a bus to and from work. On the weekends, I'm using the subway. This month, I ended up spending $66 on public transportation, but I just finally got the climate card. I've been looking for this everywhere. It only costs $45 to load this every month, and then it's unlimited rides. And I think if you spend about two dollars extra it also includes the darungi city bike so with this card you can go anywhere in seoul with by bus subway and bike for just 45 dollars a month which is an incredible deal so that's everything for set expenses but there is of course things that i want or end up needing that i don't expect i can't get into this category without talking about coffee because it is something that i buy every day today's a work day i'm on my way to get my cheap coffee it's only a dollar and ten cents in korea there's so many affordable brands if i buy 10 coffees i get one free by the end of the month i think i spend around 20 usd on coffee just by buying it every day for work that doesn't include when i go to a nicer coffee shop factoring in my cheap daily work coffee with the extra cafe runs i ended up spending a total of 33 dollars on coffee this month. My second want would be subscriptions, and I actually only pay for one subscription right now because I'm under my family's Netflix plan. I do pay for Spotify every month, and it is the couple or family plan, so I spend, I believe it's $13 a month for Spotify. Third thing to consider would be our travel account, which is actually also another separate account kind of like how we do the groceries, we also do a travel account. So each month we each transfer $73 and it's kind of just like an investment for when we take a occasional weekend trip or go abroad. We can use the money in that account for shopping, food, anything that we need during our trip. Finally, it would be anything extra that doesn't fit into the other categories that I mentioned. This month, I spent an additional $317 on personal expenses. This includes my Korean lesson, which I take once a week, and I end up paying my teacher at the end of the month. I also put in an order for supplements from iHerb. I did have to visit two doctors. As an American, 
I find visiting the doctor in Korea to be ridiculously inexpensive. I spent about $25 for visiting and getting my medicine. I also ended up buying some clothes. I don't go clothes shopping every month, but this month I did happen to buy two new items to add to my wardrobe. The first one is a new pair of jeans from P & Co. I had been looking at these jeans for a month and I just think the color and the detailing on them is timeless and I really like that I can keep them a little bit loose around the waist or tighten them up with a button. They're also pretty light, so they're good for the summer, but they're loose enough for me to use heat tech under for the winter. So as you can tell, I've really thought about this purchase because it was 140,000 won for this pair of jeans, which is more than I normally would like to spend. I'm starting to realize it's better to invest in good, strong pairs of clothing that might be more expensive, but will last longer and they won't go out of style. And the second thing I bought, which I had been looking for, was a nice lilac or purple light colored t-shirt. It's just something that I wanted to add to my wardrobe because apparently these lighter summer colors look good on me, according to my color analysis person. So that's why I'm adding more things like this to my wardrobe. That brings me to a grand total of $1,000. $301.92. I'm actually really happy about this. I didn't make it my mission this month to cut back on anything or restrict myself from things that I felt I needed or wanted. I think it's important to keep in mind that there was no major holiday or weekend trip planned. Also, like any big city, there's always something going on in Seoul, including free events. So in June, there was actually an outdoor library right across from Gyeongbokgung. We randomly just kind of came across it and it was really nice to chill in the beanbags and people watch. I hope you found this video interesting or entertaining. I'm very curious to see how my monthly spending compares to other expats living in Korea. If you made it this far, thanks for watching and I'll catch you later.